226, Assassins. And don't even think about fooling me by saying that we're going on a date only for you to drag me to some trial class. He shut down her grand plan. She was baffled at his words, sputtering, Of course not! She awkwardly laughed, giving his chest a stiff pat. Th then, instead of anger management classes, how about you trust me more? Ryan raised a brow. I always trust you, but not when it comes to you leaving me. You can give me all the reassurances in the world, but I... He halted mid-speech. He cursed himself. He almost blurted out the past, where she once left him. But I'm an insecure person at heart, he continued. You also have to trust me more. She didn't know how to respond to his last statement. Did she trust him? She looked deeply into his eyes. Their endless depth resembled a black hole, sucking her in. She never thought the color black would one day turn out to be this mesmerizing. There were so many secrets hidden within the depths of his inky black eyes, much like the nebulous darkness of the netherworld, bounding countless souls of his victims within them, yet having no soul of his own. She stopped trusting most men after Mike, but then it occurred to her, why should she be tied down by her past? Why should she give him the satisfaction that he had wounded her? That his actions then left scars on her heart as she tried to heal. Why was she pushing away the very man that can help mend the wounds and heal the scars? Just because one has hurt her so mortally. It was unfair. Something in her shifted as the clink of metal collapsing onto the floor could be heard when the emotional and mental shackles fell away. She refused to be chained down by her past. I'll try, but you have to as well. She murmured, slow and steady, showing the tiniest hints of hesitation to him, only for her eyes to become clear again, like the clouds parting after a storm. Ryan saw something was changing within her. He could not place a finger on it. Okay, he agreed, bringing one hand to rub the back of her head. It takes two to make a relationship work. Ryan guided her towards the couch, where he pointed towards the purse. She was good at derailing the topic, something he made a mental note about. You've yet to tell me what's inside the envelope, the purse, and what made you so upset. Zoe sighed. She knew the topic was inevitable now. I recommend you sit down for what I'm going to say. He slowly nodded and sat down. She was about to do the same when he abruptly grabbed her, a gasp leaving her lips, and she tumbled onto his lap, straddling him. You... You never told me how I should be sitting down. He slyly said, a wolf of a grin on his lips. He was glad she was wearing pants today, or else he would have been tempted to run his hands over her legs that are smooth as silk. You're unbearably annoying. She shook her head, even though a part of her liked the way he constantly wanted to touch her. It made her realize he wanted her as much as she wanted him that this relationship was two-sided, and not one, unlike the kind she had with Mike. You shouldn't say that if you're going to shift closer to me. He teased when she unconsciously placed her hands on his wide shoulders, her body automatically scooting closer to the warmth he provided. The AC was turned too high, and she was growing cold. He was her personal heater, constantly radiating warmth. Sometimes she wondered how he could be so hot figuratively and literally. If you want to know the truth, stop trying to change the topic. She pinched his face, angrily pulling at it, and to her utter annoyance, his skin was malleable enough where it did not hurt him, and he made sure she knew. What, was that supposed to hurt? He added fuel to her annoyance. She glowered at him, and that made him want to laugh even more. So adorable, and she's all mine. I can make something else hurt if you want me to, she huffed before saying. Now shut up and let me explain. She tried to climb out of his lap to grab the purse, but his arms slithered around her waist again, hugging her even tighter. He rested his head on top of hers and then scooted over to grab her purse, surprised by the weight of it. She angrily moved her head away from him, but he did not care. He shifted their position so that both of their legs rested on one side of the couch, and he could properly rest his head on the valley of her chest. To him, it was the most comfortable pillow in the world. 
She heaved an aggravated sigh, too tired and emotionally drained to argue with him. She opened the purse and showed him the clothing and jewelry she took. I'll be frank and honest with you, she began. Someone had sent me a recording of the conversation you had with your grandfather. At her words, he stiffened, his eyes turning murderous. Someone was purposefully trying to sabotage their relationship. On top of that, someone had snuck into his grandfather's office. He was sure his grandfather was not foolish enough to send the recording just to separate the couple, especially not after he heard the benefits the Wests would reap from having Zoe join the family. When I first heard it, I was not thinking straight. I planned on leaving you on the spot. I wanted to be a coward by running away without giving you the benefit of the doubt. She absentmindedly ran her hand through his silky smooth hair. But then you came back, he muttered as his heart began to soar. Yes, I did. When I reached the border of Boston, I realized it would be unfair to not listen to your side of the story. I didn't want you to convince me that everything in the recording was fabricated, which is why I did not mention it during our argument, in hopes you would reveal the truth eventually. She smiled a bit, continuing to play with his luscious hair that was so enviously perfect it was unfair. She knew he only used shampoo, so how could it be that his hair was always this flawless? She had to use such a lengthy process consisting of conditioner and hair masks just to get her hair to look good in a handful of days. And you did not fail me, she hummed. Had you lied, I would have left without a second thought. She could tell he was restraining himself by the way his arms dug deep into her waist, embracing her tightly as if she would disappear on the spot. Which phone number sent you the recording? It's an unknown number, but here, she pulled out her phone and showed it to him. You're free to track it down. Ryan nodded, saving it onto his phone before slipping away. And the envelope? He asked, raising his head to properly look at her. Zoe explained what happened, from sneaking out during dessert to Tobias's insults, threats, and then the contents of the envelope. She talked about the contract that would bring Chloe back to her original position. By the end of the discussion, Ryan's eyes were darker than usual, and he began to plan the destruction of the Browns. It was time that the West began to cut ties with the Browns. Enough was enough. They had overestimated their capabilities and standing within the West clan, thinking their security was enough to retain their position. The contract and non-disclosure agreement would be one of the vital evidences against Tobias and Chloe. I'll deal with it, he firmly said, not leaving any room for objections. I'm going to join you. No, it's too risky. You'll get hurt. I'll be more hurt if you leave me out of it, hiding me in your shadow, she argued, refusing to back down. This problem started because of me. I will be the one to end it. Ryan was reluctant to do so, but he did not want to argue with her anymore. He decided to negotiate with her. Fine, but in return, you have to abide by my conditions. Depends on what they are. You cannot go directly to the Browns unless you inform me first. You will be accompanied by more people if you enter their house. There will be more security around you, but not enough to compromise your privacy. His men have ways of keeping themselves hidden, but within a range where even if there were to be any suspicious activity, all of them could spring into action. Zoe did not know this, but there were occasionally people trailing her and hits placed on her. But Ryan's men had all of them eliminated before she could even register the dangers around her. Zoe nodded. Seems fair to me. Episode 227, Arm Candy. A knock sounded throughout the room. Let me go. One of your employees is trying to come in. She pushed the hands that were holding her in place. She was trying to escape from his lap, but he would not let her. Let them see. He nonchalantly shrugged. Stop being so persistent, she groaned, resorting to the childish side of her that liked pinching his cheeks. You should find better ways to physically hurt me. He shook his head, releasing her and watching as she stood up to fix her shirt. 
there's one very effective way, but it'd be hard for you to be able to make babies afterwards. A small pout formed on his face as Ryan grumbled. How can you do that to our future children? She was flabbergasted by his words, opening and closing her mouth in disbelief. Why was this man always thinking ahead of himself? Who said I will give birth to your kids? What, you don't want to? He stood up, adjusting the collar of her satin white blouse. I do think children would be nice, but the process will be better. He winked, stealing a kiss before he pressed a button near his desk. Joshua was impatiently waiting outside the door, tapping his foot on the floor. For some reason, his boss had the office altered a few weeks ago to make it soundproof. So the only way to know that he's allowed to enter was when the light turned green. It finally did. He prayed to the heavens that he would not be walking into an intimate scene and thanked God he did not. On the contrary, the atmosphere in the room was a bit awkward, as if he had interrupted something. Good afternoon, boss. He nodded his head before turning to Zoe. And good afternoon to you as well, President Ardolph. He smiled, revealing his pearly whites. Zoe eyed him like he had three heads. Ryan sure was good at taming his people. Look any longer and I'll gouge your eyes out, Ryan muttered, sitting down in his chair. Joshua visibly gulped, hurriedly looking up at the ceiling and everywhere else besides her. It might have sounded like an empty threat, but he knew better than that. Regardless, his eyes eventually trailed back to Zoe, worried that she might hear some sensitive information if they continued to speak in her presence. Zoe leisurely grabbed a folder, sat down on the couch, and began to read it. Her actions mortified Joshua, who looked like he was on the brink of a mental breakdown. Boss, that's the folder from the finance department for last month? Let her read it. Ryan easily replied, leaning one side of his head on a propped-up arm. He trusted her enough to know that she would not do anything careless with the information. Joshua wanted to cry on the spot. He was being force-fed dog food while his heart was being sent into overdrive because of this carefree boss of his. The folder she was reading had everything to do with the company's earnings, spendings, and so forth, but he easily gave her access. But... He was stressed about this issue. However, he was more terrified of his boss, who gave him a scathing glare. Joshua clamped his mouth shut. He decided to speak up about another pressing issue. Boss, the meeting with Mike Jones is going to start in ten minutes. And as we speak, his car is five minutes away from our building. Joshua briefly glanced at the woman sitting on the couch. If she was affected by his words, she did not show it. Brian peered at her through his thick lashes, watching as her fingers went down the page, scanning and memorizing the numbers. She could easily ruin him by using the information in that folder, but he did not care. Ryan checked the clock and said, cancel it. Okay, I will invite Mike Jones upstairs. Wait, what? Joshua was caught off guard by the sudden turn of events. He half expected it, since his boss never favored the man. However, he did not think the rejection would come so fast. It's 12 p.m. Ryan stood up and adjusted his sterling tie clip. Yes, I have already ordered the food and it should come within the next... It's break time, he repeated, walking over to Zoe and helping her to her feet. She was puzzled by his actions. And my beloved here is hungry. Ryan wrapped his arm around Zoe's waist and guided her out the door. Joshua stared incredulously at the back of his boss. He's, he's going to skip an important meeting for lunch? For food? What shall I tell Mr. Jones and President Decker then? Joshua hurriedly chased after his boss, whose long legs were already carrying them towards the private elevator. Every employee working on the top floor had their eyes glued to their boss. In particular, the exceptionally beautiful woman in his arms. They look good together, and if they dare say so themselves, the two had the appearance of a power couple. It was not rare for their boss to come to the cubicle area, since the private elevator was just a few steps away from the place. However, it was extremely rare for him to be spotted with a woman. There were a few insignificant flings in the past that wanted to get close to him, 
thinking that the bed they shared together was all the connection they needed, but none had ever found a spot within his arms. Many of the employees knew it was for the sake of his reputation that he avoided being seen with any woman. But when all of them were women who could put the beauty of their nation's actresses to shame, how could he not want to be seen with them? They would have made great arm candy. Now, the majority of his subordinates had realized his arms were only reserved for her. Ryan shot Joshua a disdainful glance. He did not need to speak up for Joshua to realize his boss was disappointed with this stupid question. I, I apologize. He bowed his head as he called the people downstairs to prevent Mike from boarding the elevator to the meeting room. Ryan did not give a damn that he had just turned away the CEO of one of the big five companies. He was never the type to care about such insignificant things. Instead, he worked his way to his woman's good side. What are you craving for lunch today? He eagerly asked, taking her into the elevator. She kept her eyes forward and her arms crossed, sporting the same indifferent expression on her face. This made him work harder to gain her attention. I heard from the housekeeper that you did not eat your breakfast this morning and lied about going to brunch. Zoe could practically see his tail wagging and his ears twitching as he anticipated a favorable response. What do you think about Hot Pot? He played with the fabric of her shirt. If not, we can go elsewhere. Frankie told me that you enjoy Korean barbecue. Zoe turned to him, waiting as his eyes lit up. It'll leave a smell on your suit, and you'll still have to come back to work later, she pointed out shaking her head that he was so willing to please her while disregarding his own needs. I want Chinese food, she said, to which Ryan hurriedly nodded. There's a place that prepares each dish of the course like a feast for a king. It's newly opened. I'll take you there. So he slowly nodded her head. All right, let's go then. Episode 228, Another Man's Leftovers. Mike's long legs stepped out of the car first, followed by his impeccable stature that made the female employees downstairs swoon. He was so handsome, they envied his fiancée. His short and slightly wavy hair was slightly parted to the side, and his eyes, sharp as a knife, were piercing through women's hearts. If they had not seen how incredibly suave their own boss was, they would think Mike was the most handsome man on earth. A carpet was laid out for Mike to walk on as the employees began to line up to properly greet him. Per the company's protocols, as they formed a path, they suddenly received a message from Joshua in their group chat. Ice King, send the CEO back into his car. The meeting is canceled. None of the employees here were afraid of offending him. They were personally ordered by the Ice King himself, which meant they were guaranteed protection by the company. The representative of the ground floor employees spoke up. West Enterprise heavily apologizes for the sudden change of plans, Mr. Jones, but the meeting has been canceled. The corner of Mike's lips dipped into a malicious scowl. Sophia was incredibly shocked that her boss was denied entry like this. What do you mean it's canceled? That's impossible. There must have been an error. West Enterprise never makes mistakes. It's a confirmed cancellation. I'm afraid we have to ask you to leave the premises. The representative solemnly spoke up, his voice firm and confident of himself. Sophia pursed her lips together in displeasure. Mike muttered something to her, and she spoke up. Our president would like to speak to the CEO West about this matter. To suddenly cancel a meeting that was scheduled weeks in advance is unacceptable. She switched the tablet to a different hand as she tried to call her half-brother. Our boss traveled for 30 minutes to arrive, just to be turned back. West Enterprise must not have manners. She sniped, angrily typing in Joshua's phone number. He did not answer her. He never did. Mike was already in a foul mood from the argument he had this morning. Amelia was spotted texting her friend again, the same one he explicitly banned her from seeing. She was too innocent to see that her childhood friend was deeply in love with her. But Mike was a man, and he saw the friend's affections as clear as day. Step aside. I don't have time for this, 
He snarled, taking a step forward, only for the representative to block his path. For the last time, Mr. Jones, the meeting is canceled and you're fired. Mike moved two fingers and his men came forward to grab the representative and without warning, hauled the man to the side. He was baffled by this. Mr. Jones, this behavior is unbefitting of a CEO. Mike ignored him and placed a foot on the carpet. The employees rushed forward to prevent him from taking another step. He scowled. His father was urgently pressing him for this meeting, and the elders were losing their patience. If he did not act fast, there would be hell to pay. Sophia opened her mouth to say something and paused. She saw two people in the distance. The man was hard to miss, especially when his features were so striking. His face was heaven-defying, the magnum opus of the gods, and this was the very thing that sculptors would die for if they could just have their eyes gaze upon his face for the slightest second. She swallowed hard. Every time she saw him, she was blown away by how handsome this man was. Mr. West was approaching them, and he was with a woman. From the looks of it, he was trying to get her attention, but the woman was standoffish and playing hard to get something she was succeeding at. The more she ignored him, the more he vied to get her attention. Just as his secretary saw the couple, so did Mike, but his eyes dove straight to Zoe first. His sour mood dampened further. Seeing that prissy woman only drove his madness to the edge, and all he saw was red. This bitch is the reason Ryan isn't seeing me? He snarled. What, was warming his bed at night not enough? Now she wanted to do it in the afternoon as well? What a despicable woman she is. He was glad he dumped her when he had the chance. He roughly shoved past the employees, and when they tried to stop him in his path, Mike's bodyguards suppressed them all. He walked straight to Ryan. Mr. West, he spoke up, but Ryan acted as if he didn't hear him. My love, after we eat, let's go somewhere. We haven't been on a date since the amusement park. Ryan rubbed tiny circles on her hip when he saw she was suddenly unhappy, and he already knew the reason why. Ryan, why'd you cancel the meeting? It's completely unprofessional. I don't believe I gave you permission to use my name. Ryan's cold-hearted words were like a slap to Mike who had spent half of his life coveting after the stoic man. He still didn't forget the embarrassment he suffered at Decker Banquet, but was willing to look past that. Nothing is more unprofessional than your way of speech, Ryan spat out, walking ahead of the stupefied Mike, who finally came to his senses when he saw Ryan was leaving. Do not get me started on that, Mike growled, only to be ignored. He went on. What? You're just going to abandon the meeting because of a woman? Mike let out a taunting laughter. You should learn how to separate business from personal life. Besides, she's another man's leftovers. A piece of trash dumped on the sidewalk. Silence. The lobby that was always frequented by people and constantly filled with loud chatter from opening hours to closing suddenly went quiet. The shuffling of footsteps as people rushed to their stations was nowhere to be found. Everyone had stopped moving, talking, and even breathing at Mike's insults. Ryan stopped walking. The corner of his lips quivered as a dangerous glint in his eyes formed. To chase after me, even when rejected, then scornfully insult my woman when you're too terrified to insult me, is the most pathetic thing I've ever witnessed. He spat out the words, dumping cold buckets of water upon Mike. Have some dignity, Ryan said. Stop begging and groveling for my attention. With that said, he turned around and walked off with Zoe in his arms. Today, the Jones Corporation will experience another downfall, and it would be directly caused by West Enterprise. The employees snickered at Mike, whose face had become white as paper. Once again, he was utterly humiliated in front of so many people. It was even worse that his subordinates were there to hear it, because it caused them to start losing respect for their boss one by one. As the seconds trickled by, they began to hang their heads in shame. Their boss was completely done for. 
Not only had he caused a public scene, but he had also insulted President West and Zoe. The future was not looking bright for them. Episode 229, Not the One Marrying Her. Once they got into the car, Ryan absentmindedly asked her, Should I make their stock worth nothing or bankrupt the company overall? Why not both? She responded in an apathetic manner as she stared out the window. It was strange. When she saw Mike today, she did not feel anything. She was not scared to see him, nor did her heart feel a painful jab. Okay, he easily said, surprising her. She thought he was joking. Don't do both. It'll be suspicious, she said, turning her face to him. She saw that he was already on his phone to send out the orders. Drop the value of their stock. You can bankrupt him when there is a valid enough reason. If not, the public will severely criticize you, she wisely advised him. The media companies will not dare to report this, but Mike will have his way and use smaller sources to broadcast what happened. When he does, it will not look good for West Enterprise, she worriedly said, grabbing his phone, something he could have easily prevented her from doing. He wanted her to give him attention, and it seemed this little plan of his worked. Okay, I'll completely ruin him once the reason is valid enough. He smiled the slightest bit upon seeing the panic in her eyes. It warmed his heart to see her so fearful about the public's opinion of West Enterprise. By the time the two finished their delicious meal, word of what happened at West Enterprise spread like wildfire. With Ryan paying out the media companies and journalists to amplify the flames, it did not take long for Jones Corporation to suffer another fall. The public criticized Mike for his behavior, and many more even mocking him. Of course, Zoe's name was completely left out of it, something Ryan wholeheartedly ensured. There were even a few people that spoke about how they sympathized with her because she had spent years chasing after such a worthless man. Back home, Ryan had just entered the master bedroom when he realized something was missing from his nightstand. He loosened his tie and tossed it on the couch, unbuttoning the top half of his dress shirt to reveal the slightest sliver of his muscular chest. He smirked when he saw her staring at it, then quickly averted her eyes upon being caught. What happened to the lamp? He asked her while unbuttoning the rest of his dress shirt, then taking off his suit. I broke it, she mumbled, like a sullen child who was caught red-handed trying to steal from the cookie jar. Why? I don't know, she responded, placing down her purse and walking into the closet to put everything back where it belonged. She chastised herself for this morning's behavior and prayed she would not repeat it. But then again, it was not a guarantee, for she was the type to not think clearly when angered or hurt. Is that how you hurt your finger? He gently asked, following after her and hugging her from behind, one arm coming over her stomach and the other holding her delicate fingers. Yeah, she trailed off, her body easing into his. She could feel the muscles in his chest contract when he hugged her tighter. I'm sorry, I should have told you about my plans sooner. He sighed, kissing the side of her head. She felt her heart skip a beat at his gestures. He was so kind to her, she did not know how to respond to it. The lamp must have been expensive. She turned around and took him by surprise when she hugged him back. It was really beautiful, too, she added on, raising her head to look at him. There's an auction coming up. I'll see if they're auctioning a stained glass lamp. The lamp itself was extremely expensive, as it was beautiful. But to Zoe, nothing in this world was pricey. All of it boiled down to how easily obtainable it was. And currently, the lamp was hard to get. You don't have to. He brushed a few strands of her hair to the side. I'll get one by tomorrow. Zoe sighed at his doting behavior before pinching his nose. I broke it, so I'll pay for it. When he opened his mouth, she stood on her toes and kissed it. Stop arguing with me. Dazed by the short kiss, he nodded and tightened his arms around her. Kiss me again and I'll think about it. Zoe laughed at his words before saying, 
You're too tall. She tried to leave his arms, but he would not let her. Ryan! She gasped when he suddenly picked her up again for the second time today and took her to the enormous bed fit for five people. He gingerly placed her down and climbed on top of her, but placed all of his weight on his arms. Now I'm not. He leaned his face down, waiting for her kisses. Fine, close your eyes, she said, watching as he obediently did so. Then she laid back down on the bed, watching as his brows furrowed together when the seconds passed and she still did not kiss him. When his eyes flew open in anger, she giggled. He felt his heart being squeezed upon hearing her laughter, sweet and gentle, warming his entire body. Ha ha, very funny, he sarcastically replied, shaking his head. Just then, his phone rang. She pushed his chest. Go answer it. She watched as he reluctantly stood up, answered the phone, and then sat back down on the bed. His back, wide and tense, his daunting muscles visible from being freed from the shirt. She admired his shoulder blades, the way it moved when he shifted the phone to his other ear. I'll be there, mother, he nonchalantly answered, his voice rigid and professional, as it always was. It was hard for him to be warm around his parents, or anyone in general. He never opened up his heart to anyone aside from Zoe. Perhaps that could change in the future if there were many hers running around the house. Rachel glanced around to make sure her husband was nowhere in sight. Then she said, Will you bring that woman of yours? Her name is Zoe. Yes, yes, of course, my dear son. Will you be bringing Zoe? Are you going to antagonize her? You should be worried about your father instead. Rachel did not like the way her son criticized her. I am actually quite fond of her. Both of us were not... She paused mid-sentence. She did not want to even fathom that hateful thought anymore. Your father does still not like her. He doesn't have to. He's not the one marrying her. Zoe blinked, finally realizing he was talking about her. She leaned on his shoulders, feeling his body become tense before relaxing when she wrapped her arms around him. Don't sass me, young man, Rachel frowned. It's not good to have that mentality. You youngsters these days are so bold. The blessing of your family when it comes to marriage is very crucial. It is the basic principles of... Grandfather has given his blessings. Rachel was stunned to the core. She was tongue-tied. That incredibly hard-to-please man did what? Even when she got married to Hugh, it took a while for her to get Elder West's blessing. In the end, they had to get married without it. Even so, it took years for him to eventually see her as Madam West. And that alone was not an easy feat. She had to sacrifice her firstborn son to get that title. Episode 230, Alcohol and Cigarettes. If that is the case, I don't see it being hard for her to receive your father's blessings. Zoe could faintly hear the discussion. When she heard Madame West say such words, she felt guilty, for the blessing was not earned through her own means, but because of Ryan's help. She didn't like leeching off of him like this. She was determined to get Hugh and Elder West's blessings on her own. Ryan, don't get angry when I ask this of you, but no. He quickly shot her down, already knowing what she would say. Ryan, you should not interrupt your mother like this, she huffed, turning to her younger son who was stuffing his face with her home-cooked food. She silently shook her head at him. He resembled a piglet, and a very cute one at that. She fondly smiled as her expression became tender. Your father wants her there. It's your birthday, Ryan drawled out. Why should you care about what he wants? Rachel blinked. The thought never came to her. She had spent her entire life attempting to please people. She almost forgot about herself. Because he is my husband. She did not believe in her own excuses. Ryan frowned upon her words. If she shows up, I'm not coming. And without another word, he hung up. Zoe sensed the tension in the air and said, Don't be rude to your mother. She raised you. She continued to rest her face on his shoulder while he stroked the back of her hands. 
she gave me to my grandfather, she muttered, not believing she would choose to side with the very people after her head. What was wrong with her today? Why was she choosing to be compassionate today out of all days? When do you have to go see your mother? In five weeks' time, her birthday is approaching. Zoe slowly nodded her head. She did not know it was coming up so soon. She would need to go shopping for a gift soon, but this time discreetly, and hopefully with the help of Frankie. Speaking of Frankie, Zoe realized she had yet to contact her. Do you want to come with me to visit my maternal grandmother next week? Her birthday is also coming up. There were honestly too many birthdays she had to remember now. First, it was Elder West, then her grandmother, and Madam West. Ryan smiled at her words. Did she want to introduce him to more family members? He was ecstatic at the idea. Of course, you didn't even have to ask. Zoe grinned at his words, eager to bring him to the only elderly woman in her life that she cared for. I will be staying there for three days or so, until the celebration is done. Because of work, would it be hard to take off three days? Three days or three years, I can take as much time off of work as you want. He replied, turning around with the desire to properly hug her. She slipped away from him before he could grab her. You spoil me too much. There's nothing wrong with that. He watched as she stood up, his eyes following her every move. Zoe shook her head, a silly smile on her face. Stupid, she said, before suddenly kissing him. He was momentarily stunned, but quickly recovered by wrapping his arms around her waist and letting her take control. Her kisses were soft, shy, and slow. It was agonizing to him, as he wanted to do nothing more than drawing her onto the bed. But for her sake, he didn't. She hesitantly brought her hands to his face while the others went to the back of his neck. He could already tell she was nervous. She shouldn't have to be, for one kiss from her, and he was already riled up. He let out a groan when she pulled back for air. More, he demanded, his arms seeking her waist and wanting to talk with his hands. She ran off to the bathroom in a small fit of laughter, leaving him to deal with his frustrated member. He scowled when he heard the sound of running water. He swore he would get back at her for being a tease. Bright and early the next day, Zoe made her way to Frankie's house. It amused Zoe that this place was far, far away from Frankie's parents' house. This place was also swarming with socialites, which was not a surprise. Most celebrities had apartments in the massive five-building complex, and the security here was the best this city has seen. Gliding Cloud Complex was a completely fenced off, gated community where the guards were at every outpost. If a person was in danger, there was a system known as Blue Light where residents could press a button and in less than a minute, a group of guards would show up. Zoe could smell the money in the air and if Paul was with her, all of this would make him go bonkers. Zoe pulled up to the entrance gates in a ruby red sports car and handed the people at the front desk her entrance card, which they scanned through the system. They asked her some questions and she was finally let in. She parked her car in the enormous parking lot that was also littered with the latest luxury edition cars. This place was a car hijacker's dream. Her eyes scanned the lush greenery in front of her. There was a large fountain surrounded by tall flower hedges and white benches in between the gold lampposts. There were also trees planted everywhere, giving a secluded but scenic touch to the area. The air here also felt a lot nicer, mainly due to the wide array of plants in every corner of this place. Zoe made her way to Frankie's apartment, which happened to be a three-floor penthouse. Just as Frankie had the passcode to Skyark, Zoe had the passcode to her apartment. She was amused to see the curtains shut, giving the room a chilly and eerily dark feel. It was bright and sunny outside, but with the heavy black curtains in this room, one would think that it was still nighttime. There was a very weird smell in the air, oddly familiar, but very pungent. Wakey, wakey, little birdie! Zoe sang as she placed down the keys in her purse. She walked to the living room curtains and in one fell swoop, drew it open. She was mortified by what she saw. Bottles of green glass littered the floor, enough to fill up an entire bar. 
There were also beer cans, whiskey bottles, vodka skulls, as the list went on. It was enough for Frankie to open up a liquor store of her own. Oh. My. God. Zoe breathed out in shock, stepping over the glass, worried it might make too much noise. Her eyes zoomed in on the cigarette butts on the floor. What happened here? Just then, the door to the bathroom opened and out stepped a man. Zoe was immediately on high alert. She regretted wearing a dress today. It was hard for her to move in, and she couldn't conceal a weapon. Besides, she didn't think there needed to be a weapon since she would be spending the entire day with Frankie. The man had a sturdy build. His hair was messy from sleep, his eyes barely open, but his face was very appealing. He had a bushy set of brows, thin lips, high nose, sharp chin. Overall, he was everything that the country's rising actor should be. Zoe remembered spotting this man, Stephen Minter, standing by the statue with Frankie at the Decker banquet. But she didn't think their relationship had progressed to the point where they would share a room together.